but I do want to just fly by this. So Spider-Man 4 is definitely happening, and this has been confirmed by Sony Pictures. So Tim Rothman, who is the CEO of Sony Pictures, basically said, yes, they are doing Spider-Man 4. And from what I see here is that they've signed Tom Holland. I know how much you love sequels. I, I know how much you love sequels. I, I just love them. They it's, are what I think it's the, what the you best. Think. It, In fact, I prefer to skip the first movie and watch, you know, the third, fourth, fifth. Not even the second. I feel, No, 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 no. So they, I don't know if you know this about movies, but the more sequels you have, the better they get. Yes. Plot lines get stronger. I've and heard things that. make more and more sense. Did, um, you, did you watch a Fast and Furious movie? Uh, no. Uh, to be fair, I didn't think I was going to be that on. That is true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, That's fair enough. I owe you guys one. I'll. What you owe them two, actually, by now, I think. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's starting to get into the territory where if I don't watch them, I'm going to have to go to that one in theater. And I don't know if I can do that. Yep. Uh, so, so, Tom Holland. I, I mean, I've seen whatever the most recent. You went with us to No Way Home. Yes. yes. And I had never seen any of the other ones. Tom Holland is great. Like, he does yeah. a good job. He seems like, you know, a nice, popular... He's a perfectly likable, like, right. uh, as far as, like, what you would consider an action star today. Mm -hmm. He's still kind of tiny, like, yeah. compared to your, like, with the... He's not a Sylvester Stallone or a, or an Arnold or, or an Arnie, right? But he's, like, he's what... Him and Chris Pratt are what pass for action stars these days. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. He's, I mean, uh, he's signed on for three more movies, meaning that another trilogy, and then another three additional appearances, meaning that he's going to do... Dare, he's going to have an appearance in Dare devil born again uh the series starring charlie cox and then he's also probably this is a guess on their part probably going to appear in avengers king dynasty in avengers secret wars so <clears throat> more sequels <laughs> i just don't get this like why do we have to have and if you look at me and say it's because they make money i will riot it's because they make money Stop. i get that they make money but like to a certain extent what is the purpose in some ways like if you were Tom Holland, you're making a lot of money doing the movies, but wouldn't it also be helpful to, like, transition this into, like, at what point do they just become, like, mini-series on Netflix, right? Like, we're doing all these sequels. It would probably make more sense eventually to just yeah. be, like, we are, we have two or three movies, and now if we want to keep this character around, like, it's got its own. I mean, that's what Rob, you know. they did with Robert Downey Jr. He did his trilogy of Iron Man movies, and then he became basically a utility infielder whose name recognition and the popularity of Iron Man was used to bolster other films. Mm -hmm. Actually, he was used to bolster Tom Holland in the original Spider Man movie. Yeah, uh, they brought him in. So, I mean, I don't. I mean, Spider Man is. If we're talking cream of the crop, if if Batman is DC's. Uh, moneymaker then Spider-Man is Marvel's biggest character so yeah there it's honestly it does them a disservice to put him on TV right and I get that apparently I'm the only one who's like look now four movies is too many <laughs> and he's young right so six the, is a lot like I can't th I can't think of a uh, somebody who's gotten two trilogies like two trilogies where the movies out of the same character. I don't know if that's happened. Right, and I have to believe that. Or part I, how many how many Bond movies did Daniel Craig make? Five, I think. Five. I think yeah. five. So I mean, pretty close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Well, I have to think with Tom Holland. Part of it is that ch he's charming. His character is young. Right in No Way Home, they're like getting into college. So there is a lot of time left to tell yeah. the story and what is it like to become the adult. Yeah, he's young. Well, and also he's dating his co-stars Zendaya. Right, the so people like them as a couple and they're notoriously private so in some they ways they just bought a house together or something that's the I rumor saw, they're like... always rumored to be engaged but they're <laughs> both they're both like I don't know 23, 24, 25 something like that I think he's 26 now he's, 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 he's 20, ancient he's 20, but, but she's taller than him so he's a short he king he is but like what I mean is people get this glimpse into their relationship by watching the movie so I could see in some ways I mean not actually we don't know what they're like yeah. but you get to see them hold hands and say they're a couple even if it's nothing like ha yeah. their actual personalities i could understand where they want to capitalize on the uh, sort of double fired hype of this movie yeah. i just Maybe i don't he'll know appear on euphoria <laughs> i've heard that he did i heard that he? there's like a oh. there's like a rumor that he asked to do it and like there's a shot of like the high school crowd like in an auditorium and oh, someone like a... zoomed in on it and circled and was like it looks like Tom Holland. Like he just did like an extra role, but they did. Um, they did that with uh, Matthew Lillard appeared in Scream Two at a party, even though he was the bad guy in Scream One. Wait, is Matthew Lillard the guy who played Scooby Doo? Yes, or like Shaggy. Yeah, Shaggy. That guy's yeah. amazing. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's in. Is it called Serial Mom? That uh, oh, I, he was in. He was in The Bridge. He's a really good dramatic actor. You just don't see like he. Well, he was in SLC Punk. Everyone remembers him from mm. SLC Punk, but he was a really good dramatic actor. But they just they threw him in to Scream Two, 
like in a in like an extra scene. Yeah. Also, people are mentioning obviously uh, Hugh Jackman played the same character for like twenty years, but like were like was there six individual Wolverine I just think, movies? Like, but, if you want, I don't know. No one cares about my opinion on this, but like. Why? Why why do these work? I just don't get it. I mean, in some ways, I guess it's just like every year a new Spider-Man movie will come out and so we'll go. Like, well, this is now going to be the first year since 2017 where there won't be one every other year. Um, like, but like, And people are sad about this. Yes, they're upset. Well, they are like, upset. Well, he's, he, like I said, that character transcends like movies like he, spider-man has been a part of pop culture like i talk a lot about how do these companies make their money if they're not making their money off the movies he there's no one that moves more merch mm -hmm. than spider-man yeah and that's i mean it's been around forever even yes. i think of like uh long before like little kids t-shirts right like they're still selling yes. spider-man logos so let me ask you a question tom holland's gonna do uh, four where it's there you know they're gonna bump it up to 10 spider-man movies uh do you no, six, six Spider-Man A hundred. Do you think that they're also able to do, like... What I remember is Spider-Man being an animated series that was, like, yep. part of Saturday Morning the Cartoons. Animated, yep. Do they still release that kind of Spider-Man content? Or is it sort of um, locked down while these you know, big movie studios. Are I don't know if, it, maybe the chat knows if there is, uh, if there's a Spider-Man animated series right now. I mean, we have Miles Morales, the the Miles Morales version of Spider-Man has the animated movies, meaning that those are the across the, into the Spider-Verse and across the Spider-Verse mm -hmm. based on the Miles Morales alternate version of that character. The, one of the rare examples where even people that normally don't like race swapping tend to like Miles Morales mm. as that character. But it, in general, like Spider-Man makes so much money because he translates well to adults and children meaning that there who's it there's a there's a really funny instagrammer named kayla sullivan that does these videos she's like a mom and she does all her videos as if she's giving news reports and she's got her her son is always with her in these videos and he won't wear anything but spider-man clothes oh gosh, like that just proves amazing. to you that even in the year 2022 uh a little kid still just wants to be spider-man it's interesting to me in some ways that like if we're looking at the context of things that like are so universally beloved that children know about them, yeah. even though like you're not taking your five year old to see Tom Holland's Spider Man yeah. movie, like it's just too hard. But the same thing doesn't really happen with like the Disney princess thing, right? Like you could have like a five year old boy and he's obsessed with Spider Man and they're still producing Spider Man content for adults. Mm -hmm. But with the Disney stuff, it's like you could have, you know, a girl who's obsessed with Little Mermaid, but when they try to make the live action Little Mermaid, it doesn't get the same kind of fan, you know, it can really only be the classic first one where Spider-Man has had so many iterations and to a certain point people love, yeah. you know, the cartoons, they love the Tobey Maguire, like why doesn't it work the opposite ways because superhero content is more relatable? Does it yeah. like transcend time? Um Probably just because uh, it speaks to both the the grown man still wants to be a superhero just like the the little boy does. The little girl but, maybe gets beat down by the real world and realizes that being a princess isn't the Feminism. I just I just saw this the other day. I didn't even put this up there today. This was surprising stat that says from the, the Disney earnings call: fifty percent of Disney Plus subscribers are adults without children. How many of them are men? Without children? <laughs> that is a that is a very good question. You would have to you would have to ask them. Unknown but I'm just saying like too. that kind of speaks to what you're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's a what it is is like it probably is now adult women who want to pretend like they can still be or, or like hope that they can one day be the princesses. I think the men fall into it more because of the story. Mm -hmm. I, I think that they love the, the character of, uh, of Spider-Man more than they fall in love with just the idea that uh, they can be a superhero. Right. And are some of the like, and the uh, comics have deep lore. Yeah. The comics are, Peter Parker has decades and decades of lore. Right. And the themes of like fighting crime, yeah. justice, evil, whatever those last and are something that become, something you're more aware of like are the themes in spider-man movies and superhero movies something that you grew up with and grapple more with as an adult whereas like things that are geared towards yeah. girls are something that you kind of deal with in childhood and then you leave behind it's funny i because i mentioned this all the time if you watch batman the animated series now it is extremely like poignant to adults most of the mm. first season is about like business corruption like it's like oh it's it's like I mean he's still taking on man bat like mm -hmm. a, a a huge like human bat but yeah it's but most of it has to do with like how does he become man bat well a, a corrupt business and like like there's a lot of that in those stories and like I feel like those are stories that like as they they can transcend youth 
and they can include like there's a lot of talk about like how you can incorporate adult themes mm -hmm. into kids entertainment or kids themes into adult entertainment meaning like uh batman transcends it because he's fighting crime but it's also the loss of a parent the loss of a loved one those are themes that transcend youth all the way yeah. into adulthood yeah for sure the idea of the disney princess might have those themes buried more deeply mm -hmm. but they don't really you know like you said women get beat i feel like do get beat down by the mm -hmm. real world uh though i do believe in a lot of ways we've kind of poison the culture by telling women that they can that you have to not settle for less and yeah you're gonna be a, you have to well it seems like with like women it's like they need to uh market the messaging like for a lot of girls it's like you can do it you don't need to rely on anyone like you're powerful or whatever and they need to get those messages in early because at a certain point like yeah. you kind of reach the level of life where maybe you have settled in whatever you're doing yeah. or you've partnered or whatever else with the superhero comics i think in some ways you're totally right the messages about like uh, pushing back against corruption or whatever else like they become more pressing and especially if you are an adult who is frustrated with things like you see your own world reflected there like they yeah. the messages age better and so maybe that's why you can have you know a uh four five six yeah. uh spider-man movie but you can't do the same thing with um I guess they try with like what, Black Widow. Is that a female? Well, even, well, even think about like uh, the Dark Knight, the the Dark Knight Returns comic series. Comics in the at a certain point became for adults is more than they were for kids in a lot of ways. Mm, like yeah, they yeah. the the storytelling evolved to be something that was for adults because adults grew with it. Me and uh, Mary would actually discuss this. She's like, "Who is the audience for this?" I said, "The problem is they're going for a phantom audience now. Mm -hmm. In this case, they're going for the phantom audience of like Gen Z identity politics people. Yeah. But what it is is they have a built-in audience. It's it's funny too because they're they're pushing it away. But there's a built-in audience of fifty-year-old nerds who have disposable income that they don't want. I think that's the biggest thing. They have disposable income, so therefore they're valuable. Yeah, but they but they see it as it'll die out eventually. But yeah. you're gonna get thirty well, think, more years out of those. True, people. and I would think that actually, you know, with the rise of what is it? What's like anime and just generally where, uh, and I would say it couples with the rise of like video platforms and Instagram. Like we are a much more visual society than yes, we were. Absolutely. So like. I don't know, even 50 years ago, there were probably more kids who read just text yeah. than there were kids who read well, comics. That's why comics sell was for specialty, right? Yeah. But now there's way more image based. Like, I uh, have a good friend who's reading Harry Potter to her son for the first mm -hmm. time, and she showed it to me. It's beautiful, it's got all these illustrations. That was not the Harry Potter I grew up with. There'd be like an illustration at the beginning of the chapter and not throughout the book. And in some ways, it's more accessible to him because the images are there, right? Yeah. Like, is that bad or good? I think in some ways, um, comic books are becoming a more popular medium than yeah. traditional text, right? And, it, well, I mean, it's still it's still hard sell these days. Any type of physical copy of something is a hard sell to get it. people to buy these days. It's like, I, I understand Do you that. use like, a Kindle or anything? No, I can't. I went, have to hold a book. To, yeah, to that's how it. I am. But, like, do Kindles have comic books? Or, like, I guess graphic they, no, novels? No, they have, uh, there's, uh, yeah, there is, there, not con not Kindle, but there are uh, websites that you can do where you can buy. Uh, you but it doesn't exist on Kindle. That's kind of interesting to uh, me. I don't know. Uh, maybe in the chat they know if they can do that on, if they can do that on Kindle. But there are, uh, I know Amazon, I don't remember, what's the name of the one? But it's, basically you pay a monthly fee and you can get access to all of them from from yeah, a publisher. Yeah, because that was like, like the that. whole thing. I would never do that. Like, I, I can't do that. No, I like physical copies of things either. And in some ways, if that's true, if, if society actually prefers physical copies, like maybe more and more the only physical Comic copies Comicsology, that's what it's called, yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, I can't, I get like... But it's I not like they make a device. Yeah. Like, that was the whole thing with Kindle. They're like, you don't need to have bookshelves. You can like put all your books in here and carry it around. I tried to read um, A Brave New World on a, on a Kindle mm -mm. and I couldn't do it i didn't get through it until i actually got a physical copy of it yeah i so. need to hold it and i'm actually bad i like i like to be able to underline books that i'm reading and like make notes for myself uh which means that i also can't go to the library yeah so it, it's really funny too. we were at we were at the mall recently like everyone like the bar you christmas shopping ba barnes and noble has a, a fairly large section of like graphic novels and omnibus mm -hmm. and everything there that you can still get access to that uh, i just don't know how they stay in business with all that stuff it always feels like they're just pumping out like pump and dump content like uh, all, uh, all the people there right we there was a fair amount of people in that Barnes and Noble mm -hmm. but they were all in the anime section in the manga section yeah well and or that's gotten were, bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger over time I mean that medium is so popular which again goes to this idea that like of course there are 500 Spider-Man movies and they all interweave with the other yeah. characters like visually presented texts or you know stories are 
gather gaining really strong audiences and so i am backwards i get that but like i i just it's not a world i would have predicted We're old living in. souls as they say i so. i'm meant to be under a rock thanks for watching this clip guys if you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media links are in the description below bye, bye.